Monday to Friday, 6.30 to 9, breakfast time, starting next Monday on BBC One. It's 6.30, Monday, January the 17th, 1983. You're watching the first edition of BBC Television's Breakfast Time, Britain's first ever regular early morning television programme. Very good morning to you all. Now, from now on, five days a week, from 6.30 till 9, we hope to be present at your breakfast table to bring you the morning's news, weather, sport, traffic. But we also plan to put an awful lot more into our breakfast menu. Regular features, regional news, live reports from all over the country. Now, as you can see, our home is very, very relaxed and informal, and we really do think that that is the right setting from which to bring you interviews with people and personalities who are making the day's news. Now then, let me tell you just one important thing. Time, at this time of the morning, for the next two or three hours, is of the essence to all of us. So we need our clock. Here is our clock. That's the time, and there it will stay. But now I'd like you to meet the other faces whom we hope will become regulars over your breakfast table. Miss Selina Scott, you You're must be awfully... A, a good, good job. We've, Keep it up, my We've only been going for about a minute. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Do you think we're winning so far? I think we're winning. Yeah, I think we're winning. You know, I woke up this morning to a bevy of beautiful men who were standing outside my front door with really? cameras and notebooks and autograph hunters. It was lovely. I don't think that's going to stop. I really don't. No, I know. It was well, good. Well, our other running mate is Nick Ross, who will join either Selina or myself towards the end of the week, but we couldn't leave him out this morning. No, okay, good, we, morning to you. good morning to you. We really have been astonished at the goodwill and the good wishes we've received from the paper. There's cards all over the place, the publicity we've received. We're conscious too, though, that there are cynics, that some people hold the view that television in the morning is sort of decadent and sinful. Oh, it is, it is. It's yeah. not. Yes, it it's is. It's not. And we're determined to make breakfast time what its sister programmes are in so many other countries across the world. Bright, informative, simply the natural way to start the morning. And the programme, we hope, that's the natural showcase for anyone who's got anything important to say. In other words, an agenda set up for the day to come. We'd like to know what you think uh, about breakfast time this morning. There's a telephone number you can ring into. It's 01 if you're outside London, 811 8055. 811 8055. Let us know what you think. As you say, Frank, I'll be back for my main stint on, on Thursday. On Thursday. Well, we look forward to seeing you then. But actually, you are making a brief reappearance later on this morning. Yeah, I haven't got up. I'm not going <laughs> home now. <laughs> Fine, our guests are very important to us, and I'd now like you to meet uh, two of our guests this morning, and they'll be with us throughout the show. Now, Jane Pauley is here. Jane is one of the main presenters of the Americans' uh, longest-running breakfast program. It's NBC's Today Show, which actually celebrated its 31st birthday last Friday. Jane, you must have wondered why we've been all this time following yeah. you along. 30, I don't look that old, do I? You look even years. lovelier in real life. I can ah. tell you after a boozy celebration of your birthday than on the box. I say good okay. morning. When I, I bring greetings from the land. It's still yesterday where I come from. Fine. <laughs> we'll be talking to you later on. And next, an absolute delight to be joined on this first day by Sir Harry Seacombe. Uh, well, part of Harry Seacombe because <laughs> <laughs> six and a half stones of him is missing. I don't really believe you see that now, Harry, you're Harry Seacombe at all. Well, it's not six and a half, four. Four, four stones. You look gorgeous. Ooh, half a hundred weight. You look gorgeous. Mm. I just, I just uh, fear that you're going to lose too much, you know, and disappear, fade away into nothing. No, there's plenty left. Oh, <laughs> plenty left to go around, folks. <laughs> well, we'll be talking to you later as to how on earth it's going to affect your considerable life. Well, now, of course, news will be of paramount importance to us on breakfast time because uh, every morning we'll be bringing you details of all the major stories that have happened overnight. Our newsreader here is uh, on breakfast time is Debbie Ricks and now has the first summary of the day. Good morning to you. Thanks, Frank. Good morning. Our first look at Monday's main stories. A Boeing 727 of Turkish Airlines has crashed on landing at Ankara Airport, killing more than 40 people. It's the airline's seventh big accident in 10 years. The Home Secretary, Mr William Whitelaw, is to tell the Commons about the government's policy on arming the police. The man shot by mistake in London on Friday is still critically ill. Leaders of Britain's water workers are deciding this afternoon whether to call their first ever national strike. The workforce has already voted four to one for industrial action. Alex Kitson of the transport workers has been to Spain to try to persuade unions there to stop the new Vauxhall Nova from coming to Britain. But it's not clear so far whether he's got their backing. And Lech Fawensa is leaving home in about half an hour's time to see if he can get his old job back at the Lenin shipyard in Poland. This time, he says, he's got a secret plan for success. That's all for now. Now back to Frank. 
And by the way, sports freaks, and I include myself in that description, will be well catered for on breakfast time. That's David Icke's responsibility, and he's putting together his contribution at this particular moment. Sport then coming up a little later on. Now, we're also going to launch you into the day with up-to-date weather forecasts, both national and regional. Francis Wilson will be taking regular looks through his window on the weather. Hello, good morning. Good morning, What's What do you like this morning? Well, it's rather gloomy, rather monotonous. I'm afraid I don't have much of a good tale to start with. It's a rather cloudy day everywhere. What we can do is have a look through this window on the weather at the satellite sequence to start with, and then I'll show you what I mean. The satellite is about 22,000 miles out in space, and it goes, it has to be that far to go around the Earth once a day, as we go around once a day, relative to as it's stationary, which is very good, because then the land will stay still, and so will the sea, but the only thing that will move is the atmosphere, and of course that's exactly what we want to look at, the atmosphere in motion, because that's what the weather is. And you can see our trouble on this close-up, there's cloud basically everywhere, but if you look at the grey scale now, and remember we're looking in the infrared, the heat radiation, the dull, the grey, that's the warmest cloud, the lowest cloud, the less significant, the brightest cloud, is the coldest cloud, which is the more significant, the deeper with the heavy weather. So from that, let's go on to a forecast for today and start with 9 o'clock this morning. And at 9 o'clock this morning, a heavy band of cloud across the north of Scotland and cloud over England breaking, but cloud in the West Country, rather pervasive. It's not a very nice day in Scotland at all, I have to tell you. It's going to rain all day in the north of Scotland and the west of Scotland, and the wind will get up and up and up, and eventually there'll be gales, and then they'll end up with snow. But as time goes by, that belt of cloud will move slowly southeastwards. So by midday, the belt of cloud over the north of Scotland heading southeastwards, and shafts of wintry sunshine over England, but a rather dull day in the west country. And that's our first look at the weather. And we'll get more from Francis on the weather later on. Now, in the last few days, as, as Nick Ross was telling you, letters and telegrams have been pouring into our offices here, wishing us luck with breakfast time. And we'd like to thank everyone who's written to us. But one group of people are particularly interested in our progress. They're the presenters and the producers of all the other breakfast programs around the world. Programs which every day reach audiences from Oklahoma to Osaka. And this may be the first regular breakfast television service in Europe, but most of them have been broadcasting for many years and they were all determined to be the first to say hello. Good morning, it's Monday, January 17th. I'm Michael Munro. And I'm Kerry ann Wright. And from all of us at Good Morning Australia, we'd like to wish the BBC Breakfast Time Show the best of luck on its first day. Good luck and take care. Good morning, I'm Pamela Wallen for Canada AM in Toronto. Welcome to the air and good luck to everyone at breakfast time. Hello, I'm Bill Curtis. And I'm Diane Sawyer. Each weekday morning here in the colonies, we anchor the CBS Morning News. And we wish you the best of luck with breakfast time in Britain. Hi, I'm David Hartman. And I'm Joan London. We hope you'll enjoy waking up to a fascinating new morning show. All of us at Good Morning America wish you great success with breakfast time. At uh, the close of our program each day, I sign off with make it a good day today. Well, all of us here at Good Morning America hope that all of you will make it a good day today. Hello. Artists, congratulations to BBC Breakfast Time from Hong Kong TVB's Good Morning Hong Kong show. We wish you the very best and hope to see you go from strength to strength. Hello. Good morning from NHK Tokyo. Congratulations, BBC Breakfast Time. We hope everybody watching this program. You'll never work again. You'll never work again. <laughs> 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 
Breakfast. Breakfast time, guys. Well, that, that was our bad trend. The fellas, the fellas on the cast, Selena, the fellas on the cast, would like you to have That's so that. And this is for Jane Pauly. Jane, thank well you very done. much indeed. What an end. Lovely. God bless. Oh. And we can't leave Debbie Ricks out. We've brought some roses for Debbie as well. I thought it would be so wonderful. So there we are. Thank you. It's a very soggy cake. Now then, Ivor, have you sorted yourself out? Soggiest cake ever. Robert, tell me about the cake, because it looks absolutely delicious. It's got around here, if you can see, all our names, Frank, Selena, Nick, Debbie, Francis, David, and Russell. A superb cake. Yes, it tell is, me about it. It is lovely. Baked, a very light fruit cake, uh -huh. thought for morning, basically. Uh -huh. And just the idea was a logo of uh, the show. Yeah. So it was the name. <laughs> it's just right for my diet. I was going to say, Harry, Harry Seekham, are you allowed a little slice of cake with us this morning? No, I'm afraid not, but, but I'll watch you. <laughs> you can have my piece. And a glass of champagne. <laughs> oh, Fine, well, there we are. Thank you all very much indeed. Right. Let us pass well, the... Well, quite honestly, after this smooth running That's program, to end up being drenched. <laughs> Lord Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Spencer, Cheers, Cheers to all of you. Bye. Bye. Yes. Bye. <laughs> Cheers. Yes. Well, our toast uh, really to us all and to you for watching. Many, many thanks indeed. We hope very much you've enjoyed our offering and that from time to time in the next weeks ahead you will drop in whenever you can, whenever you find it convenient, somewhere between 6.30 and 9 o'clock. You've been uh, watching the first edition of BBC Television's Breakfast Time. I hope you'll join us again from time to time. God bless and good morning to you. <laughs> You're very good. <laughs>